Hey, welcome to a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Ah, it's some good OJ. So here's your glass of OJ today. So uh, back around Christmas 2020, uh, of course, I'm a little late on this commenting, but there's still some important things to discuss, especially as we've seen a little bit of aftermath and some statements from GoDaddy about this. Uh, but essentially, uh, GoDaddy, as any good corporation does, their information security program has a, a phishing and security awareness training program. Too many times, security awareness and the phishing program are just one and the same, and they really shouldn't be. I mean, they can be governed by the same people, but they are really two different programs. Phishing is just one little focus area, or should be one little focus area of security awareness for your employees. Totally a different conversation to have in a different glass of OJ, maybe a little bigger glass of OJ. Um, but for this one, we're just focusing on the phishing because what what GoDaddy thought was so appropriate to do, uh, of course, during the pandemic, um, GoDaddy has laid off a lot of their employees, uh, despite, by the way, record revenue growth. Um, Activision did this, I think, at the end of 2018. Going into 2019, they had record revenue and then just decided uh, to lay off a bunch of employees, a few hundred employees. And then meanwhile, their CEO got um, several million dollars of bonuses. Um, you know, so during a pandemic, you have record revenue growth, lay a bunch of employees off. The last time anybody saw any kind of relief check from the government in America, for those of you living outside of America that have governments that did care to uh, actually keep people in homes and keep people fed. Um, yeah, we, we didn't get that in America. Um, but in America, the last time anybody saw a relief check was at most $1,200 uh, for an individual back in like May, June. And there's even people today, there's been reports about even people today who still haven't seen their check. There was people over in Austria who received checks, but no, there's been people in America who have not received their check yet um, to just tell you how bad that is. So this is just how, how impactful that situation has been. Set the playing field. So this fish comes along. Uh, an email went out to all GoDaddy employees. At least we think it was all GoDaddy employees. At least 500, because 500 people clicked on an email that purported to be GoDaddy saying, hey, it's been hard times, it's the holidays, we're gonna be giving everyone $600 bonuses. We just need some information from you. So, you know, there's urgency. Um, there's obviously something that the employee is gonna be very interested in clicking on. Um, and so then there's a link to uh, go and validate some information about you. Usually phishing tests are looking for emails, passwords, um, maybe even some other information about the company, but usually they're just looking for emails and passwords because they want to be able to sell those credentials or they want to be able to use those credentials to gain some access of some kind. Um, in this case, the phishing test was meant to mimic somebody trying to mimic GoDaddy internal communications. Um, 500 people clicked. So then 500 people, two days later, uh, receive a little message saying, Hey, by the way, that was all fake and you got to go to a fishing training, which is really just punishment to people for, um, you know, clicking on an email. So there's several problems that are going on here. The obvious problem is the timeliness of this regarding everything and how hurt employees probably are from being laid off seeing a bunch of their friends, colleagues they've probably had for years just sent away from their job in the middle of a pandemic. Um, you know, that's that's pretty terrible. And, you know, don't blame them if uh, they're upset over this for certain. Um, also, there's been very little relief from the government in a lot of ways. A lot of people need housing. A lot of people, um, you know, don't live in states where maybe there's been moratorium on... Um, on rent uh, or evictions, and so there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues out there, and to then go about and say when you laid off people in a record revenue year, oh by the way we're going to be sending you six hundred dollars, 
Him? Yes, this was a fishing test. Yes, this was somebody trying to... And yes, threat actors do use this very tactic. But I'm going to get back to something here that I just mentioned a bit ago. How do you communicate to your employees, maybe before we send a phishing test out there, maybe we ask the business, how would we actually send out a notice to all of our employees about a bonus? Okay, so we talk with our HR, we talk with our finance internal communications folks, because you probably have somebody like that on the payroll who is doing that kind of stuff, devising communications that go on behalf of the company in these places. And you ask them, what are your current processes today to send out these types of communications? What do they look like? Okay. So maybe you'd want to, maybe you're so great at security awareness, you'd want to actually um, mimic that process. More often than not, though, you're going to want to make sure you stay away from that process. But number two, the number two question is, is not only how do we have standards for actually communicating with our employees, number two really is, have we trained our employees and informed our employees that this is the way we will communicate this kind of information to you? Because really inherent in security awareness training and in phishing what you're trying to get people away from, especially at the beginning of a phishing you know, um, program, at the lowest level of maturity, you're trying to get rid of the very obvious problems. You know, terrible grammar, um, coming from email addresses that clearly do not come from the company, they come from somebody's gmail.com and your company doesn't use gmail.com. You know, that kind of stuff. It's the very easy, easy red flags that we can teach people. That's kind of like your level one. That's the stuff you try. This really is like a level four level phishing. And I know a lot of companies aren't ready for that. There may be some executives you'd want to hit with that. And there may be some like really high level people you'd want to hit with that level of maturity. And you wouldn't have a problem giving this kind of message to because they're executives. They're not low level employees. But you're just going to blast it out to employees. I doubt very seriously that inside the training that those 500 people had to take i doubt very seriously it is a uh, dissection of that email to show them what was wrong with it to actually show them how they need to be doing this and i doubt there is a review of material that would have led up to that phishing that would have told them by the way remember that email remember these things we sent before remember this training we tried to get everyone to take a bit earlier. This is what this was for. Before you can go out and start fishing people on the level where you are trying to mimic very serious, sensitive internal communications like this, you your training has to be at that level and your tr and your communication standards have to be at that level. You already have to have communication standards that say, "Hey folks, we're never going to send you a link to go click on stuff for monetary gain or for bonuses or for payment information. What we will do is say, please go check out the central company portal. There is an article there that talks about this. So then I guess the only person that would be able to then try to hijack that is someone who forged an article in your SharePoint or whatever you're doing and then sent an email that said, hey, go check SharePoint. This is how you can go get your $600 bonus. If that's what's happening, you're already, uh, you've already got a lot more problems than just phishing. Um, but again, the idea that you need to have a standard communication protocol for stuff like this, things where you're going to be deciding pay or benefits with people, you need to, you need to have communication and you need to have training around that to let everyone know this is exactly how you're going to do this. And not only that, you need to announce that type of training, especially when you're going to be doing a sensitive um, fish like this. You actually need to go ahead and ahead of time, like two months ahead of time. Yes, two months even. That's maybe even too short of time. But you need to go ahead and put some of these training things out there to remind people, hey, this is going on out there. We don't know if GoDaddy did that. We don't know if GoDaddy's efforts ahead of time to say, hey, 
here's the kind of COVID scams you're going to see out there. Here's some reminders. And that's a great thing to do uh, inside of your company as well as part of security um, awareness training is to have kind of like coffee chats from time to time with people and put that up somewhere where people can review it and let them know in your company news or newsletter or news site hey there's a new there's a new uh, coffee chat with security or there's a new fireside chat with security or there's something with security they're going to go over something important <clears throat> your security awareness program needs something like that to keep fresh content out there Kind of like the glasses of OJ here. We're just basically, <laughs> this is more insider uh, baseball of uh, security than uh, you'd have giving to people out in your, your workforce. Um, but come on, folks. You can't just, in the middle of a pandemic, justify yourself scamming people with a $650 dollar because that's what you're doing. When you're fishing, you are participating in a scam. You are scamming internal people. And right there, they just tried to scam internal people for the six hundred and fifty dollar bonus, uh, and five hundred people clicked. That's a lot. That's quite a few people. I don't. Again, I don't know how many people GoDaddy has working for them. That's quite a few people that would click. That's good to know. What I probably would do in this case, if this was GoDaddy, and if some of the situations I talked about were not true, they don't have a communication standard. They don't have. Um, you know, they hadn't trained people already on this, you know, and everything. I wouldn't tell them they need training. I would have told them immediately right after that click. I would have told them by end of day, hey, by the way, there is no bonus. I would have put in there saying this was part of a training program because this is something that's very important out there. And we wanted to see, you know, we wanted to see how many people would click. Uh, nothing's going to happen to you. This was an information exercise. This was just us gathering some information. We thank you very much for helping the information security department understand where, you know, new levels of training need to go. You know, some, some message around like that where you're thanking them for their participation. You're thanking them for helping out. Um, and there's, there's, there's no $650. Uh, maybe it's where you go and ask management in this cases like this, go and ask management for a hundred dollar gift cards. And you just say, we're just going to give a hundred dollars to everybody, uh, regardless of whether they clicked on this or not. Right. We're, we're just going to give it. So that way they feel like they got something, you know, put that in your information security awareness budget. Um, that may be a lot of money, uh, to a lot of people, uh, especially to those who, you know, reported it, maybe they get an extra 50 or a hundred for that one. Um, but you got to put something in there like that sometimes uh, to, to kind of round that out. It's still a very sensitive thing. And I get a lot of the information security professionals I've seen on Twitter um, and in this conversation are kind of on both sides of this. Some people saying, you know, you should never do this. Uh, some other people saying, nah, this is totally what an adversary would do. So, you know, this is totally legitimate. Truth is often somewhere in the middle. To me, if you're just going to be doing a phishing program and all it is is just a ha ha lol you clicked, um, that's not a phishing program and it's not doing anything of value for your program at all, uh, especially punishing. And this is what it comes down to. This is There's a difference between training and using training as punishment. And a lot of people perceive uh, information security training in response to clicking on a link. They see that as punishment. And I would too. I've clicked on links before. I've clicked on the program uh, phishing uh, link before, and I've been sent to training. Uh, and my objection always is none of your training material actually covered the tactics you used uh, in this fish or the previous fish or the next fish you actually came out with. There was no training on it. Uh, and the tools that you provided were not sufficient to be able to uh, to do this. And not only this... This is actually a way the company may actually uh, be communicating because maybe there's not a standard. I've seen it in the past. Um, and so this is where I'm saying that you don't want to go beyond the maturity of your program. If you do, make it purely an investigation into how many people would click you know, to see how much at risk your company would be. Maybe that's a way to go and, and you know, talk to the higher-ups, uh, talk to leadership, talk to the board and say, hey um, – we're maybe at risk here of some people clicking on some stuff. We need to standardize our communications because if someone talked to our employees this way, 
they'd be getting quite a few clicks. And maybe there's some privileged users who are clicking, right? So maybe there's people who have access to really sensitive information who are clicking. You don't want them clicking. <laughs> and uh, it's just one of those things where, again, you have to think about some ethics here. And this is where I, I've seen on Twitter and more and more. Um, you really need to have ethics in your college programs uh, as a part of the, the program of study. InfoSec is not merely a technical uh, program. It's not a technical skill per se. It is also a very uh, human behavior skill, especially when it comes to phishing, uh, especially when it comes to security awareness. It is a human understanding uh, skill a lot of that requires empathy and a lot of that requires ethics. And I think if you would have had some injects into this saying, is this fish practicing empathy? And are we balancing that with some ethics? Are there some other ways we could go about this? And should we have already gotten some things in line before we go ahead and release this fish or release this test of our human employees? what employees are human before we do that let's check these things and see if we're ready for this see if this is already at our maturity model or whether we're we're behind or we're trying to reach too far ahead of that maturity model um like many things when you're trying to reach further than you can actually grasp you end up doing this kind of stuff and uh the met and then the follow-up from this was kind of even worse um or at least it put poor salt on the wound a bit. Um, GoDaddy's spokesperson said, uh, GoDaddy takes the security of our platform extremely seriously. <laughs> Here's another story for that one. Apparently, it's not so hard for someone to just call up GoDaddy's uh, phone lines and just transfer DNS. <laughs> that doesn't belong to them. So taking security of the platform very seriously or extremely seriously. There's probably some extra things to go uh, that need to happen there too. We understand some employees, emphasis added, were upset by the phishing attempt and felt it was insensitive. Those two words really sting if you're one of those employees, which I would say probably most of the employees felt very uh, upset about this or at least mildly miffed um so to to say some you're trying to belittle your employees you're trying to marginalize your employees really uh and then uh to say that they were upset by the fishing tail and felt it was insensitive uh you now are feeling insensitive again to your employees um because now you're kind of contrasting felt with think or felt with something more logical or rational. Like this wasn't really the rational reaction to our fishing. You know, you feel like this is insensitive. Um, those words really sting uh, and don't feel very sensitive. Uh, for which we have apologized. Yeah, if anything, that statement tells me I don't think you have committed to the apology. You just kind of did that to you know get get them off your back um while the test mimicked real attempts in play today we need to do better and and be more sensitive to our employees <laughs> fully exemplified by saying that some only some of our employees were upset and felt it was insensitive so my glass of oj today and I just finished my glass of OJ, so this is going to be finished in a second, uh, is to think about your employees. Think about being an employee and receiving one of these things, especially if you are attempting to imitate internal company communications to all employees about sensitive things like bonuses in the middle of a pandemic in a country where the government support of the people has been almost zero. Um, yeah, you and, and where you've laid off people in the middle of a pandemic, you might really think very carefully about that. 
uh, and you may consider alternatives uh, and also think about your maturity and see if you're even ready to be giving these types of fishing um, fishing tests or fishing attempts out there for security awareness. GoDaddy clearly is not at that maturity level. Um, they just simply aren't. And even this follow-up statement made by them by a spokesperson um, really screams they're not at a level of maturity in their business yet uh, and InfoSec. Um, to be able to truly empathize with their employees and uh, consider them and be sensitive to them, uh, you know, while you're trying to protect the business, because um, you want you want to create some insider threats. <laughs> this is a great way to create some insider threats. <laughs> you thought you were fishing and now you got some sharks in the pool. This is not a good thing. This is not a good idea. Um, so you know, watch what you're fishing. Uh, watch what you're fishing with. Watch the bait. Sometimes it stinks really bad. Sometimes it's poisonous. So you got to be careful of what you're using with your employees. Treat them like humans. Come on. This is the middle of a pandemic. Totally inappropriate to do something like this, especially when you're not even ready to, uh, when you haven't trained your employees and you're not even ready to be able to take responsibility and, and respond to your employees like mature adults. Come on, everyone. We got to be better than that. I'll see you in the next one.